Chest to waist ratios for men are normally distributed with a mean of 1.17 and a standard deviation of 0.08. What is the ratio separating the highest, i.e. best, 5% from the rest? Okay, so before I start, I want to identify some key phrases here. Normally distributed tells me I should use the bell curve. I'm given that the mean is 1.17 and that the standard deviation is 0.08. What is the ratio, right? What is the ratio? Not what's the probability, what's the ratio? If I see that, then I'm looking for a ratio, a height, a weight, a length, whatever, um, but not a probability, then I know I'm using the table backwards. So I'm gonna be trying to find a z-score that's associated with an area. So let's use my little bell, cave, bell curve drawing tool here to help me draw a bell curve. I think I actually do this better without the drawing tool, but whatever. I've made it, so I'm sticking with it now. All right, so I draw my bell curve, put my line in the center, Z at the bottom, X axis below that. The Z axis is always centered at zero. The X axis is centered where the mean is. That's gonna be 1.17, 1 1.17. 1 I'll place the mean in the upper left-hand corner along with the standard deviation for quick reference. So 1.17, standard deviation is given as 0 0.08, 0 0.08. Now I want to find the cutoff separating the highest 5% from the rest. The highest 5% from the rest. Well, if I were to cut the curve here, right, this would represent this little chunk here as obviously having to hold the 5%, right? And then all the rest, the 95% would be below that. Is that the right place to cut it? I think it is because if you cut it on this side, that represents the top 5% or the highest 5%, right? Um, as far as the others, um, the other side of the curve, if I'd cut it there, that'd be the lowest 5%. So the ratio down here would be smaller, the lowest ratio. So this would not be the highest or best 5%. We want the best or highest, so we're gonna be on the right-hand side of the curve. Okay, so there we go. Um, just a little heads up about the context of the problem. This is chest to waist ratio. That means, of course, you take your your chest size, you take a measurement around your chest with a measuring tape, and you divide it by your waist size. And so obviously, if this number is greater than one, what it means is that your chest is wider than your waist, which I think most people agree is generally desirable, unless you're looking for the, um, the beer belly look. If you think that's a good look, then you know I guess you're not interested in this ratio, but chest to waist ratio, a higher one indicates that you have a broader chest than you do waist, and that's generally seen as a good thing for men. Okay, so let's go ahead and now, um, do the rest of the work for the problem, which is to figure out if this is 5%, based on the fact that the whole half of the curve is 50%, how much area is located from here to here. Well, that has to be 45% then. And we want to know that percent, just as a reminder again, because our table goes from the line we look up to the center. And so if I want to know what z-score is located here under that line, I'd better be looking up this line and going over to the center. Um, the 5% is not connected to the z-score in our table. From our table's point of view, the z-score here is related to this area from here to here. So I need to look up that area. And that area as a decimal is 4,500. So we're going to go ahead to our z-table now, look up 4,500, and find the corresponding z-score. Before we go there, we should always identify whether it should be positive or negative because the table always gives us positive by default. In this case, that's okay because we're on the right-hand side of zero, so it's gonna be positive, so it's okay to have a positive score. Let's go to the table and look up 4,500 and see what we get. Okay, so we're looking for the area of 4,500 in the body of the table. So I come down this first row to I see something near that. Well, it's a little off screen, so we're gonna move this table up a little bit till we see something nearby that number, 4,500. Okay, so let's go ahead and stop right there and look at what we have here. At the 1.6 row, we have 4452, and then at 1.7, we have 4554. So it must be between these two numbers. So let's look in the 1.6 row and see if we find anything that's close to 4500. When I go across, I see um, the number 0.4495. That's only five ten thousandths away. If I go across to this number, 4505, I see that's also five ten thousandths away. So we don't have a closest value. These are equally close to the number we need. So what we're going to do is take both z-scores with us back to our problem, and then I'll show you what to do from there. So we're going to use 1.64 and 1.65. Let's take them both back and see how we handle the situation where there's a tie. So since these are equally close to the number we need, 4,500, we're gonna take 1.64 and 1.65 with this back to the problem, and then I'll show you what to do there.
is when we went to our table, we saw that 4,500 was actually smack between two values we had on the table. One value was associated with 1.64, the z-score 1.64. The other value was associated with the z-score 1.65. And we basically were right between those two. So the technique is to essentially add these two together and average them. So in other words, we'll do 1.64 plus 1.65 and then divide by 2, which will give us 1.645. And that's the number we'll use as our z-score. So whenever that happens on the table that you're smack between two z-scores, if you're right in the middle and there isn't a closer one, you average the two results. So we're going to get the result 1.645. That's the z-score for that position there. Now once we have that z-score, the next step is just to plug that into our formula. Remember our formula for this location here to get the x value is going to be x is equal to z sigma plus the mean. So our z-score is uh, 1.645 times the standard deviation of 0 0.08 added to the mean of 1.17. This will give us our cutoff score for the most desirable chest to waist ratios. So 1.645 times 0 0.08 plus 1.17. When we do that we end up with 1.30 rounded off. 1.30 if we round it off. So 1.30. 1.30 then is the cutoff score for the chest to waist ratio that separates the top 5% from the bottom 95% of men. So anything over 1.3 is obviously going to put you in a very desirable um, scenario. Very good.